Chris Dolliver from the band Madam X. Uh, Chris, we go way back from the nightclubs in Hollywood back in the days of rock and roll. And uh, <laughs> you're still hanging here. And uh, the man, Godzilla. I never heard that. So I've known <clears throat> you all these years, but I didn't know they call you Godzilla. And I'm fascinated. So explain. What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh... Well, um, long story short, I was uh, in a shower after a show one time, and my, one of the road crew members walked in the bathroom, and they screamed and said, oh, my, and they said, what's wrong? And he said, and I just made all that up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I just want to let you know, when you move, your camera moves. Are oh, because it's, are, are it's, sitting it's sitting on my lap. I'll try not to move. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't move. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but, yeah, how did that come about? My singer, uh, I was, I have a, a different kind of personality. I'm a Gemini, so I have two um, personalities. And my onstage personality is uh, short-tempered and everything's got to go right all the time. And I play hard and things go wrong. And uh, one night I lost my temper and smashed a bunch of stuff on stage. And uh, Brett, my singer said, you were like, af reflecting after the event was done, he said, you were like Godzilla going through Tokyo. And then the road crew started to call me Godzilla, and then the band started to call me Godzilla, and then the press started to call me Godzilla, and it's kind of been a uh, a nickname that I've had to live with. <laughs> Not the most flattering, <laughs> but... Well, I guess, well, that's why, because I was thinking, I didn't relate, because I know you as the very sweet, nice guy hanging out, and yeah, I'm nice um, I, I guess I've never seen you perform. I've seen some videos, um, but I've never seen you perform in person, which is, uh, I hope to see you one day. Um, where have you been playing? Uh, we haven't played since February of this year because of oh, the COVID yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, right. Our last show was down in Miami, uh, okay. doing a, something called the Monster. We do like Monsters of Rock Cruise. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's, uh -huh. it's where like 20 bands get together yeah. on, on a cruise ship with 4,000 fans and you go out to sea for a week. We play two times, two shows, two 70 minute shows. We do um, a meet and greet and a, uh, a Q and A. And the rest of the time is is vacation time, basically. But it's, I mean, it's it's just, I think for the fans and the bands, it's just uh, it's so much fun, so much. Uh, I'm usually the last one to go to bed and the first one up. Oh it's, wow, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of where fun. Do you, where do you guys go on these cruises? Where do you go? Um, we leave out of Miami and go to. Um, we've been to Haiti, uh, Bahamas. Um, oh God. Uh, I don't know, around the Caribbean, I don't know, you know, Jamaica, <laughs> you know. Sure, all those exotic island places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's it's uh, it's a week, but it goes by in in a flash. It's you know. You've and had so I, many. <laughs> you've had so many I mean, now. You for, you've had so many now. You forget where you were, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We do it all the time. Um, but uh, because of, you know, and then we were supposed to be in uh, in Europe in March. Uh, I think the 13th was our first date in the UK, and then we went to, or supposedly, supposed to go to Dusseldorf, Germany for another festival and so forth. And then just after the uh, February show in, in Miami, then everything started to cascade as far as cancellations, mm -hmm. and we're still not allowed to play. Mm -hmm. So sure. we've been rescheduled for 2021, but it's, you know, and and I if I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to say, um, it's time for reparations. Yeah. Oh, oh you mean for, rock, for rock people that, or just for rockers or just whatever? No, for, for artists in general. Right. Yeah. Because the technology, big tech has changed the music business. I, I don't know how they, I don't know how it could be repaired. Right now you, you, re, you write a song, you record a song, you, you rehearse a song, you record a song. And the studio was $125 an hour, so it's not cheap to do so. Um, even if you're well prepared going in, you still spend tens of thousands of dollars to come up with a product, of which mm -hmm. as soon as it's on the internet, everybody has it for free. Sure. Yeah. In the days when when I knew Kelly, uh, when I first met Kelly, back then you could, you got signed by, you know, if you were good, you got signed by a label and and everything followed suit and you got paid for your work. Now, sure. I can't, Think you tell me another industry where you can work your ass off and be creative and produce for everybody to have it for free. You go get your hair cut, you pay for that, 
you get your nails done, you pay for that. You buy a car, you pay for that. Everything, everybody else, the house painter, the, the landscaper, the, everybody performs their, their, their service. job, yeah. right. service, and gets paid for it, except a musician. Right. I don't you know, care if it's rap, if it's R&B, if it's techno, if it's hip hop, if it's rock, sure. if it's alter, whatever it is, if you're a creative person, it's, it's out there for free. And I don't think that I, yeah. you know, I, I'm it's, over it. It's funny. I was just listening to a, an old podcast with Joe Rogan and Paul Stanley, and he was talking about the same thing. You know, he was like, it's not right. It, they're steal. you know, it's like stealing. You're not getting paid. You don't you know you get Spotify will pay you, but you know who makes money? YouTube. There's some kid dancing to a song on YouTube, and they get so many likes and so whatever. Sure. But you know somebody, somebody spent money to record a song, that this person is you know and and if if you don't think music is is essential or musicians or entertainers are essential, turn off the radio. Don't sure. play it in your car. Don't play it in your house. Don't have it. Don't live your life for a week without music and then you tell me how essential music is hey you're preaching to the choir i totally yeah, get it a singer. He has a i'm singer a singer and so, i do music yeah. also and so uh you know i'm just navigating it again because i've been out of it for a little while myself and so now I'm i'd like to, i'd like to hear what you do oh great yeah i'll yeah. send it to you when it's been about a week couple, couple weeks <laughs> Yeah. She has a song coming out. Um, yeah, I agree with you, Chris, you know, I'm in the news business and we're the same things happening to us really because Google's, uh, technology is absorbing all the advertising dollars and news is free. Nobody wants to pay for news anymore. So we're dealing with the same issue. We, we do need, um, some kind of intervention. Yeah. Well, some kind of intervention to s split up the pie, you know, so that everybody's getting a piece of it instead of just these big techno giants getting all of it. They're sucking everything up. They're putting, you know, they're putting small businesses out of business and um, it is a problem. It's an issue. So yeah, I'm with you. I totally support that. Uh, yeah, and, we, and we need music to get us through all this. Yeah. I mean, gosh, everything yeah. that's been going it's on so this whole year. In our lives. The, the CEO from, uh, I think it was Spotify, some a musician was complaining that they don't make enough money, and and his reply was write more songs, like it's that easy, like right? you can just get up in the morning, go to the sit on the toilet, and come up with an album. <laughs> it's not that easy. No. And then if you got if you got something that's worth recording, then you have to spend thousands of dollars to get that product so someone can hear it. Right. And it's all for free. I mean, it, really, I, I gotta say it's probably stifling people people's creativity because why should you you know spend so much time and effort and, and energy and money only to produce something so somebody can give you a attaboy or a high five it's like dude you know what i don't need music for validation in my life i mean at, when i was a, a much younger person I, when, when i was a little kid i wanted to be a doctor and then i started playing guitar my grandparents bought me a guitar and that was at six years old but even up until you know high school, I wanted my focus was being a doctor until the music business overtook my life. And I've ded dedicated the majority of my youth and function, you know, dedicating it to, to music. And hindsight 2020, I should have been a doctor, you know, at the end of 20 <laughs> years being a musician, what are you? You're a musician. <laughs> yeah. years being a, 20 years being a doctor, you're a, a doctor, right? Anyhow, I, I, I digress. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's uh, good. You brought up a good point, yeah, Chris. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a valid point and it's yeah. good that you brought it up. Right, yeah, Kelly? and we like to talk about things that make people think. So feel right. free. Um, you know, Listen, two of my I'm best friends. i take this opportunity. Like, yeah. share, subscribe. We're going to build this channel and it requires you, you yeah. general public, because these ladies are, are changing it right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, we're killing it. <laughs> And this portion show is brought to you by me. Yeah. Maybe direct results in I, I like Chris. He's a good salesman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is our, I mean, our hope is to control the world. <laughs> That's part of the evil plan, right? You have to start, it, it all starts with a conversation. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. No, I'm, glad, I'm so glad you brought that up. If you like our videos, go ahead and click on like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, hey, I wanted to ask you, is, it, is the Sweden Rock Festival going to come back when, when COVID's over, or do we know? I, 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 believe, I believe it's slated for, for the 2021, and that mm -hmm. is an amazing uh, festival. It's, it's run wonderfully. I mean, we've played 
several times and we played with you know black sabbath uh with ozzy and and ozzy oh, wow. with zach wild and judas priest and iron maiden and all all wow. the bands that i looked up to uh in the music you know growing up sure i, I, I play on the same festivals <laughs> you know wow. it, rob zombie i mean the just the, the camaraderie is amazing and that's just that's a uh a wonderful festival. Yeah, I do believe it's 2021. If, well, now that there's several vaccines and, you know, mm -hmm. and things are in check, I, I'm, I'm sure that will play. That's true. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I was reading your, uh, that article Kelly sent me that pre, uh, please kill me, um, please kill me .com. It was like talking about your whole story and how uh, you could have been on one of those behind the music uh, <laughs> episodes, but you guys had a really roller coaster ride since the days you uh, came from Michigan, right? Aren't you, weren't you born in Michigan? Yeah, I'm from, I grew up in Michigan. I'm still in, I came back to Michigan. And you're in Michigan. In <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I like the Great Lakes. I, I'm out in the country. I, I, uh, you know, I, I've lived, I lived on the East Coast. I've lived on the West Coast and I've lived in the middle. Uh, and I just came back to Michigan. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but it's been, it was crazy. I mean, uh, as a young musician, uh, when we were really young, I, I, when I was in my early twenties, I bought a semi tractor trailer, you know, 40, 40 foot trailer, you know, 18 wheel tractor trailer, long story short, loaded it through full of lights and sound. And every time we showed up to a city uh -oh. in, in our, back in the early eighties, we had the same amount of equipment that they would bring into an arena. And that's, and that's how we, yeah. we were, when we came to a city, it was like bigger, badder, brighter, louder, you know, more <laughs> aggressive, more you know, two women on stage playing aggressively like men. Our guitarist and our drummer are both, uh, they're sisters and, uh, and they're women. And they, they play, it was like the Van Halen, like Van Halen only with, instead of two brothers, two sisters. Yeah, they, I saw that. I saw yeah, that. And we like that. Surface. Women power. Yeah, yeah power. you know, I mean. Women girl. <laughs> they're fantastic musicians. And we're, yeah. we're working on a new record right now. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, we, we've, we did, you know, I, I lived my dream as a, as a, as a kid. Um, and I'm still chasing my dreams. I still don't That's know what good. I want to do when I grow yeah. up. <laughs> well, That's what Kelly I and I say, were talking. Well, two, yeah, two of my best friends, Kimra is a singer, and Suzette Andres, I don't know if you know her, um, I forget the name of the band she was in, she'll kill me. Uh, she's a drummer, and like they're still doing music and once music gets into your blood i mean i wish i was musical i'm i'm on the outskirts i'm just the fan i'm the one sitting in the front row cheering my friends <laughs> on but um i see the joy it brings them just to be able to perform and you know please other people and then of course as you said chris it's vital to our culture to have music i mean it's true music brings it, it brings back memories it just in, invokes emotions so many emotions in our lives that it's it is vital to keep music alive i you can i, I you know i i believe i am a, i believe in being creative and you know in, the, in that but i don't believe in doing it for free right yeah. i believe there should be oh, yeah, and here's here's how the reparations i think should work i think big tech there should be a tax on big tech whether it's facebook or google or or youtube or whatever and and some of the dollars that they earn yep. it's if you're a if you're a published artist or even kelly with uh days of our lives people go on you know on youtube and they watch reruns and you know yeah, and cool. kelly's not being compensated for that's her, a good point that's true i want her, my money for um, her bringing joy to people yeah you know and you know but so if there was a tax and and then it was everybody that's got a published work it's just not 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 like spotify where if you sell so many records you get x amount of or you have so many streams i should say you get x amount of dollars this isn't this isn't a this shouldn't be something that's done by um uh, by accounting other than if you have a published work, then there's uh, 10,000 artists, hypothetically, they're going to divide a billion dollars between 10,000 or 100,000 or a million artists or whatever, whatever that it's just a fat, a flat payment. And what is it? A hundred bucks a year? I don't know. $10,000. I don't know. But at least a little bit of something in recognition for, for your labor sure. and your, and your face, Kelly, on days of our lives and people are still enjoying your your moments, doctor, so and so, so and so. Your patients here, I can't, you know. Um, well, with actors, you know, yeah, they're creative too. Um, yeah, you think? 
Yeah, and, and I, time, so. well, I think our, the arts should be subsidized more. I think right. when you're starting out, you should also be able to apply for some kind of subsidy to live and to in, develop uh, your art. And survive. in Europe, I know that actors they used to have um, subsidies from the government when you did certain plays and things. I don't think America has really ever had that. We don't appreciate the arts, you know. Well, we, it, we want money. They do as long as it's for free. Yeah. <laughs> I missed it. What'd you say, Chris? I said they do as long as it's for free. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, tell I us mean, about your new album. So you're doing a new album. What? Yeah, we have. Okay, so uh, we released our first one in 1984. And I was managed by a guy named, a uh, man by the name of Don Arden, who's um, at the time he managed, Don, Don managed Madam X, my band. He was managing uh, Black Sabbath, it was fighting huge. his daughter Sharon over the control of Ozzy. And Don's responsible for Electrolyte Orchestra and Air Supply and uh, Black Sabbath and Ozzy separately. Um, so Don signed us in 84. And uh, that was our first album came out then. Then in 2014, I think it was, uh, we released another one on EMP Records. Um, and that's, um, that's called Monstrosity. And when that album was released, they, they pre-printed, I don't know, 10,000 units or something like that, um, the, the label did. And the, when, the, when the album was announced that it's, you know, it's on, it's, you can buy it, we sold, they sold every unit in one day. And oh, wow. uh, then they had, they, yeah, then they had to reprint. So right now we're working on, uh, and uh, we're working with a new uh, a producer who's absolutely amazing. And his name is Chris Laney. Uh, not only is is he a super gem of a of a person, but he's his talent is is over the top crazy. He's like Mutt Lang. Mutt Lang was mm -hmm. uh, did uh, Shania uh, Twain. Yeah. Oh, and Def Leppard. Yeah, no. yeah. Sh Shania Twain, Def Leppard, ACDC, the right. biggest of the biggest. Uh, right. Did I say Def Leppard? But you know, Pyromania, <laughs> Hysteria. You know, and when I listen to, you know, what what we'll do is is we'll, we write our music. And send a lyric sheet and and uh, uh, a simple recording of the song. We we all send you know the the four and it's all original band members. Now after thirty, I think we just had our thirty sixth anniversary of when our first record came out just last week. You know, mm -hmm. but it's all mm -hmm. the original members. We're all still alive. We're all sticking. We all still you know look and feel great. Um, but uh, so we send the demos to Chris and he'll take those songs and he does like a spin maybe on the arrangement or you know and adds. Uh, the you know fills it out like a like a full body song and I get it back and I'm going like oh my god it's like I get the same feeling as when I first heard you know ACDC for you know when hit when Mutt was uh, producing that or Def Leppard or Chris is so so damn good he's he's so and long story short long story even longer this new record is amazing I can't wait for everybody to hear it and it'll be yeah, out in 2000 awesome what a will great it be released what's going to be the process. Well, we're, we're, we're recording um, final tracks right now, and we're, we still have three songs to write for the record. So we're, we're still all submitting uh, music for that. Um, but we're still we're recording the final tracks right now, and all the final tracks will go to Sweden. Chris, is, uh, he's a Swedish lad. He also plays in a group called uh, Pretty Maids. Uh, his name is Chris Laney. Um, and he's worked with the group Europe and, uh, oh, God, uh, I, a lot, lot, I'm sorry, I'm at a loss for words. I, I can't remember all the artists he's worked with, but he's worked with a, a lot of, a lot of great European bands. And uh, it's just a short matter of time before Chris is a, a major player in the states as far as producing. That's that's that, my gut. That's really he's great. Really so, good. Sometimes it takes the Europeans to appreciate us before we go. We get big in America. <laughs> well, America, you know, America does what we do, and I'm not, you know, dissing that, but. Europe is is a little different flavor, sure. and um, and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel uh, as far as coming up with a new genre and a new sound and a new you know we're not a, 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 an '80s band trying to sound like you know a 2020 band although we do uh, with the with the technology but we're the music is is we we write the way we write and it's a big sound it's big choruses big guitar parts big 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 you know anthem uh, anthems, you know, it's just, it's a different flavor. And that's appreciated greatly in, in Europe and other parts of the world 
Um, and I'm hoping that sound will come around in the United States. And if they embrace it, they do. If not, we have a great record. And the people that, that uh, enjoy 80s music, the Ameri you know, our American audience, they're going to love this. If you like Def Leppard or, Bla or, or right. Rat or um, Warren or Slaughter or, you know, any winger, anybody else, uh, if you enjoy that, that sound, Motley Crue, you know, if you enjoy that sound, you're going to love this new record. And um, it's, it, it's, it's That's pretty awesome. astounding how good this stuff is. And some of the songs were written in the 80s. And we have a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Henrik Halverson. He's a, also a Swede. And he found out that we did this live broadcast in, in 1985, I think it was on one of the local radio stations. And it was recorded and it was on YouTube. And Henrik heard it and he said, whoa, I love this, you know, in his Swedish <laughs> accent. Uh, do you mind if I share this with Chris? And, they, and then Chris replied back like, oh my God, there's some real gems on here. Do you mind if I take some of these songs and, you know, and do an arrangement on them. And, and I said, yeah, no problem. Nothing's etched in stone. And I got the stuff back and he took these songs that were written in the early eighties and turned them into monsters. It's like, Oh my, their songs that were good songs. They just didn't make it on our, on our first record. Mm -hmm. but, oh my God. They're just, so hey. I, you know, I don't know. It's, you know, we're not trying to, to re reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to make the wheel go round. You know? Sure, uh -huh. sure. Yeah. That's a good analogy. <laughs> well, rock and roll is still big um, here in Wyoming. It's funny, you know, they always have a country station and then we'll have one or two other radio stations, all rock, all yeah. 80s rock. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this just brings back my memories. I turn on the radio in the car, I'm driving and I'm like, these are my songs, this is my time. Um, and it's all rock. So that's what the people here listen to. Um, they go. They love to go to concerts down in Denver, and it's rock and roll all the way. So, um, wow. rock and roll. Still Wyoming? Around. Why Wyoming? <laughs> That's a long story. <laughs> That's a story into itself. You, you know what? Yeah. If if it's if it's a challenge, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why real quick. My sister. I came to vi visit her. Came to see her. I ended up staying. I was really headed for Vegas, which I may end up there eventually. Anyway, um, but my sister lives here, so that's how I ended up here. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, but yeah, it's rock and roll and uh, on the radio and, uh, you know, I still appreciate all those songs because that's when we're, you know, when we were growing up and young and yeah, so I can't wait to hear. What do you mean? I'm still growing up and young. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> young, I, I feel you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I wanted to mention something else. So I asked you for some photos that I'm going to put up in the video and oh, no. one of them was your hand playing <laughs> and there's blood dripping down it. So that's another thing that I just can't get over. So you, you were, how do you, how does that happen? <laughs> I, I wish I knew and I'd, I'd fix that. <laughs> um, I beat, I beat on my bass with my hand and it creates a certain sound and I, I beat hard. I mean, I broke bases in half on stage hitting it so hard, you know, it'll like crumble. It's like, ah, you know, firewood and I'll throw that down and grab another one. And I think I, oh, gosh. Um, but anyhow, so I, I injured my hand. I, uh, after the first time we played in Sweden, I broke uh, I, one of my metacarpals. Um, uh, anyhow, I hit it so hard. Any, but but it, I think, uh, I don't know, I might have hit my, my finger on the bridge, uh, which is a big, it's a big metal piece that, you know, the strings run through and that's how you do your intonation and it's part of the tuning process and holds basically the strings of the guitar. And it's metal. I, I think I hit my hand okay. on that, not... Uh, not having such a good aim in the moment um, and I, I got injured and I and it happens quite often but I usually don't realize I'm bleeding until halfway through the show or maybe not even till the show ends you know and then they figure you're bleeding it's like uh, oh <laughs> thanks yeah See how he suffers for his art yes yes <laughs> for yeah, free <laughs> adrenaline adrenaline going that's well that's what i want to ask you so okay so you have this new album how are you guys going to make money on it how like what's the distribution how does this work well it's um new industry. our contract just expired uh this uh, last october with emp records and it was only a one album deal so we're fine with that so um we we will we, we will be shopping for uh, a different label mm -hmm. and uh i'm you know if uh we'll, we'll, we have interest, but I don't really want to say uh, yes or no with this, that, and the other thing, or, or even mention uh, the I names of labels. But my real question is just how does this industry work these days? Um, so you do do still go through a label? Yes. They distribute the record for you? And yeah. it, or do they still call them records? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll, 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 because we're, we're kind of a nostalgic 
nostalgia act these days. Um, and that'll never change just because of our history. And, you know, Black Sabbath is a nostalgia act, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's still new, new, we still create, we still get new fans, but that's, you know, that's kind of how, you know, that is, it is what it is, but, uh, it will we'll release vinyl, uh, in CDs okay. and the vinyl is, you know, people collect it. I don't know if they have turntables. I don't know, but it's always a lot of, you know, the meet and greets and the signings are always signing posters and, and albums and CDs and, you know, eight by tens. And our, huh. our meet and greet line is usually is like, hundreds hundreds of people in Miami uh, in February our meet, our meet and greet was supposed to be like a half hour and it lasted about two hours it was just oh, an wow. incredible wow. line of, of people and there was and, and, and here's how it goes there's a man standing before me in uh, in in Miami and, and he's he's got an accent I said you have an accent where are you from he goes I'm from Australia and he says and I flew from Australia to see you here Oh, I've waited 30 years to meet you. And it's like, like, oh, bro, you know, yeah. oh, <laughs> can I give you a hug? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah so, you oh. know, and, and likewise, there was, uh, you know, I was in Sweden uh, and, and another meet and greet line. And there's a man standing before me telling me and showing me some artwork that he drew when he was in middle school of Godzilla, you know, and it's, I'm looking at this man going like, dude, you saved this for, 35, 30 years or whatever, you know? And uh, it's just, it's kind of a, it's, it's a nice, you know, th those are the little gems and diamonds that really yeah. make, that really make it for me. Uh, again, I don't, I don't do this for validation uh, for myself. I have, I have a son who looks up to me and, oh. and that, that's more gratifying than anything I've ever done in the music business. I love the music business and I keep doing it, but you know, it's my, my son is, is yeah. you know he's really the really uh yeah. how old is he? he's nine nine oh yeah. oh that's wonderful does, yeah does he show yeah. any musical ability yet he's oh. a he he sings uh when he was in the womb i would sing to him in the bubble you know <laughs> and um he sings he's got great pitch and, and we harmonize and you know um i've got guitars around the house you know basses and les pauls and stuff of which he'll if I'm, he'll come to the studio with me and, and, you know, and as I'm recording a song, he'll start detuning, you know, like, rah, rah, rah. it's like, oh, sweetheart, please sit over there. You know, daddy will be done in a little bit. Oh. Um, but he, uh, he's, uh, he, no, he doesn't show musical interest like that, but he does sing uh, and he's nine. He likes video yeah, games yeah. and, you know, he's, he's a fantastic artist. His artwork is, wow. is amazing. That's cool. Yeah. 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 But, so maybe he'll be doing some of your album designs in the future. <laughs> I hope so. Maybe. So what else are you doing? So uh, other than music, you have a son. What um, else? I'm, I'm working on my uh, YouTube channel, kind of like yours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm compiling um, in from our, our uh, snippets in, in uh, clips, you know, right now. And then when I launch, I'll have, I don't know how much, but some Here's some like uh, pre prepping for a show, like for the February show uh, that we did in Miami. Uh, it was me, you know, talking about I'm driving to rehearsal and Brett's coming in. Brett lives, our singer lives in Phoenix, Arizona. So he flies in for rehearsals before a show. And we'll get together and rehearse as a band and go through the show and come up with the set list and you see how the energy flows and, you know, do the arrangements and so forth. And then, so it's a little bit of, you know, pre production, uh, behind the scenes rehearsal stuff. Uh, and then, fly, you know, packing and, and flying to Miami and then how the, the event uh, supplies you with hotel room, you know, your hotel. So check into my room, what my room looks like, what they provide. And it's always top notch. It's, it's amazing. Um, and then um, going for sound check, uh, you know, the event and then prepping for the show just before showtime, getting dressed and, you know, the hair and, you know, I'm being laced together and strapped together with my, my leather stuff. And then walking out on the stage and then the performance and then the meet and greet and then the wind down after the show. So that, that's like an episode. And I'm building my house. My house is, it's a bit, I don't know, it's big. It's uh, 5,300 <laughs> square feet, uh, oh, three stories, geez. six bedrooms, five and a half baths. And I wow. built it my, myself. <gasps> um, wow. I, I started with my, I started with the 1,888 square foot footprint, of, which was a 110 year old farmhouse. 
and I bought the house because I love the property. And there's things about the house that I liked or loved. You know, it's plaster walls and hardwood floors and it's, but I didn't like the second story. And so I, I bought the place because I thought that I can do what I want with this house and it won't break my heart. So I cut the second story off down on the floor and built a second and a third story with nine foot ceilings on the second floor and the third floor and two towers. And Whoa. people say it looks like your house looks like, you know, it looks like a castle. They call it the castle. Wow. And um, one, one night, it was around Halloween-ish, a couple years back, uh, my friend started dating a girl and it was, you know, she was, they're driving. It was dark, I guess, midnight-ish. And she goes, I'm going to take you by, and he told me the story, I'm going to take you by this really scary house. And she he says, okay, you know, they're driving down the road and, and they stop in front of my house. And she goes, here it is. And I go, isn't it scary? My friend goes, my my buddy lives here. <laughs> so my house is, it's scary. You know, I have a ghost. And the, the ghost came with the house. Um, it's all right. It's a friendly ghost, like Casper. Okay. Yeah. It gives oh, you no, some it gives you How some ambiance and, and some, uh, what is the word, attitude, inspiration to uh, write. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't, the, the ghost is, um, I, I get inspiration from, from other people. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube. I, uh, there's some different channels I really enjoy watching. And I was binge watching, uh, oh, God, uh, <laughs> uh, X Factor and uh, America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, you know, I during this COVID thing. But I watch other people's um you know, I like a guy named uh, uh, Leo, and he's uh, he's got Samson Boat Company. He's built, he's rebuilding a 110 year old uh, sailing yacht. You oh. know, stuff like that. You know, I get inspiration from other people's hard work. When I'm winding down, I was work, I was on the third floor this this morning wiring uh, smoke detectors. Uh, so it's always something to do around here. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's I'm a, if I if I'm angry or I'm having a, a you know, I call it therapy. I'll go out and start pounding nails or laying stone or mixing cement or, you know, I, mm -hmm. I ordered 40 tons of, uh, of, of castle stone. It's, you know, it's quarried stone. It came on, you know, 80,000 pounds of stone, uh, a big, some of the stones weighed, you know, they're eight inch bed depth, which is how it, thick it is when it's lying, you know, up against the house. So it was eight inch bed depth. And some of them are 30 inches by 24 or 30 by 30 inches. So they weigh several hundred pounds. Wow. Um, so I break those stones up and, uh, and, and, you know, and lay them. So you can only put, lay a stone or two a day and it take you, it'll take you eight hours to, you know, get it in its place and, and put cleats on the wall to make sure that it doesn't fall and shimmed up and lay the mortar. And it's, how do you know how to do this? <laughs> That's what I'm waiting to say. How? I ask a lot of questions. I watch YouTube and I'll sit in front of a construction site and watch uh, stone masons yeah. oh, wow. or uh, bricklayers, you know, uh, lay brick or lay stone and ask questions. And, and I, uh, for, for my stone, I had um, my friend, John, who's a, a, a real stone mason, uh, got me started. So, you know, the mortar mix, the, you know, how, how we're going to do it, you, you know, and then uh, he got me going and walked away from the job and started a family and, and I haven't seen him since. <laughs> so I had to finish it myself. So, wow. you know, that's... Uh. That's really neat though. That's really interesting. And, and what a pride you must have in your home. I mean, you know, everybody's proud of their house because they decorate it, but you built yours. So that's I'm, I'm still building and I'm building for yeah. my son. Uh, I'm sure I'll be built. Yeah. You know, it, there's lots of blood and lots of stop. broken fingers. And yeah, I broke my wrist one year and I broke my ankle another year and, uh, oh. you know, smashed my fingers and, you know, lots of blood around here, <laughs> but it's I still up. You know, random little stories. It would uh, get out my Sharpie and write on this day and, and it was snowing and I did this, that, and the other thing and Leo and blah, 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 you know? So there's like little messages all over in the walls and the floors and, you know, oh, will anybody God. ever see them? I don't know, but it's, oh, it's kind of, it's a storybook of, yeah. of, of stories. Like yeah. That. One day your son is going to be like, Oh my God, my dad wrote this and da, da, da. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll be re redoing a wall or something and there'll yeah. be a little message from dad to yeah. him. What you know, a treasure. Cool. I love it. I love it. You have to put that on your YouTube channel too. Well, thanks for the, yeah. Thanks for the idea. I, I, yeah. I certainly will. So I, Kelly, I've got a question for you. Um, yeah. So you're on days of our lives. I was Not yeah. currently it was yeah. correct. Correct. Yeah. And um, how much prep time did they give you? How, how much time did they give you the script before you actually had to tape? Well, I get the strip. They would mess, they would message her it to my house. And so I would get it about a week before. And, you know, you memorize the lines. And then uh, there was really no rehearsal. That was the scary thing when I first started doing it because 
you just learn your lines and you show up and they do the blocking and they tell you where to go and uh, then you do it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it, it's is it filmed live? And, mm -hmm. and Well, no, not live. Um, and there's no audience or anything, but it's, you get one take. It's filmed once. Okay, uh, and if you mess your lineup, is your, is yeah. your, okay, <laughs> yeah. but if you do, does, are you trained to cover or, you know, what I mean, happens? how does it? Well, you know, and I always did my lines verbatim because I was afraid, to, you know, I was new and they were giving me bigger and bigger roles. And then when they finally, they told me they were trying to match me with a love interest, they did have me do a line once over because they were trying to see if there was chemistry with me and this doctor. Um, and so they had me do the, do it the again, doctor. a second take. And they go, well, look at him and smile this time. And uh, there was no chemistry, like zero chemistry. He didn't even last on the show very long. He was, anyway, um, <laughs> I won't say who it was, but uh, that's the only time I did it twice. And then, yeah, I, I, one time, um, oh, what's his name? He plays John. He was Marlena's husband. Uh, I forget his name, Drake Hogeston. He was improvising, so I just went along with it. Uh, but he oh. didn't follow the script, so I just kind of went along with what he was saying and answered him, and uh, that was it. But yeah, I, I always stuck to the script, and I made sure I knew my lines really well. So interesting. One, one of my friends is on General Hospital right now. He's got a, a, a couple days of work, and he, he was saying that they do one run through, and that it would most people wouldn't be off. They wouldn't know their lines, and they would kind of just do it, and then by the second take they would have it down perfectly. Uh, and he wow. would always be amazed, you know, wow. um, Laura, I guess she plays Laura on General Hospital. She's oh yeah, she's been on there forever. Yeah, I so he's doing scenes gone. with her and he was saying the first time they did a run through, she was not off book yet. And then by the second, but then she, somehow she metamorphosized it and it went boom, you know, so it's just, that's the yeah, trick. It's so, it moves so fast that it's scary. It was very scary. Cause it was, yeah. and one day I had a lot of blocking there and I, I was playing a nurse and I had to give somebody a shot and I had to switch the real needle. So at first you're showing the real needle and then I had to switch the real needle with a fake one that uh, bends and doesn't really hurt the person. And I was so afraid I was not gonna do the right one when the camera's not on me. And like, there was just all this, all these things I need to do at the right time. So it was scary. It's a lot of pressure, sure. um, you know, it was a blast. I mean, it's what I really wanted to do or what I thought I wanted to do, you know, life gives us direction i guess I, I really did think i wanted to just be on a soap opera and that, i would have been very happy to do that but life took me in another direction so. now one more question regarding the soap opera thing yeah. are you on um uh when you're on when, when you're on the show are you under contract and do the and if so do they state you can only do this that and the other thing in your public life or your private well, life i would i wasn't on contract until i they were looking for the, my love interest and then they would have given me a contract. And before that, I was just playing, like I played for a year and a half, Deidre Hall's secretary. Uh -huh. And they, I wasn't under contract. I just uh, got paid a flat rate every time. Um, yeah. But yeah, you will be under contract. You know, soap operas are not even, I don't know if they're even on TV anymore. I think they're all moved to the that's internet so and yeah, that's they don't true, get paid what they used to get paid anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they used to, make a million dollars a year or whatever but not reparations <laughs> seriously well, yeah and now that. reality shows are the new soap operas I you know? know i know and they're not That's even real they're not no. yeah no they're scripted yeah. most of them yeah so. well, probably, probably all of them yeah probably. yeah yeah i think so and the more drama the better um you know they always want people that are willing to create drama it, it, it's yeah. um what was that cat's name uh you filmed in Chicago. Um, Steve was one. Was his henchman? Uh, I think he was a. He was a public official prior to that. Oh God, he had glasses. Uh, Jerry Springer. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah. Jerry Springer was probably the first reality-ish. Yeah. It's all that scripted. Yeah. You know, it's lots of drama, lots of hey, you're gonna yeah. blah 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 blah. You know. Sure. Sure. Somebody yeah. was always going to throw a chair and yell and two women correct. fighting, pulling hair and yeah. He was like the gold stone of drama, melodrama. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, you, you don't get an Emmy, you get like a, 
golden poop on on a <laughs> Oh, really? You really? get a, a fried That's ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I don't. I, you, I, I, I take that back. The golden poop, that was totally not well, correct. That's okay. That was, it, that was bad. Yeah. We get and, it. We get and I do, it. I do, I do um, appreciate the entertainment value that was in that. But um, and it was entertainment. It was entertaining. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who does a good cat? Sometimes, play? sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on entertainment for who. I don't know. Right? I don't think I, would, I ever like that stuff. But um, so, Chris, anyway. is your house outside of Detroit? Are you like in the suburbs or? Yeah. Or well, it's. Uh, I don't know. I'm. I, I'm out in the country. I've uh, four acres. I'm surrounded by 117 vacant acres of sod farm. So it's like living on a golf course, but nobody's golfing. Um, <laughs> wow. So I'm out in the country ish. You know, I mean, I have the you know big big box stores within you know three to five miles, um, but it's peaceful. Wow. You know, I have deer and yeah. stuff. And it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, lots and, of yeah, lots of wilderness creatures and. You know, and, and my, I let my dog out to go pee in the morning. I can pee next to him and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, did you bring, did you mention to me that he went to school with Madonna or the same school as Madonna? Yes, I read that in like one that? of your articles. We did oh, some homework did. Did research and they said that you went to school with Madonna. Is that true? That is true. <laughs> is that rumor? Really? Wow. That, yeah. That, that, okay. that, that exposes my age. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. You, she was way before you. She was way yeah. before you. Yeah. It was well, much older. She was much so older. You. Yeah, you guys that, are well, and you were an advanced student, so they skipped you a few times, you know. <laughs> they did. They moved me up. Yeah, for bad behavior, they just want to get me through the system. Right, right. Um, yes, I did go to school with Madonna. I was. Uh, we went to West Junior High School together. Um, her si younger sister Paula was in my grade, and, and Madonna was in a group. Great. Uh, then I went to the same school, and I remember um, Madonna in the hall. I can still picture her, you know, in the in the hallway, and she. She, she's Italian, so she had like long, you know, uh, long hair, you know, um, and she just, just dressed a little different than the other girls, a little sexier, a little, I don't know, black black stocking, or not, not stockings, but. Fishnets, maybe, fishnet stockings. Uh, you know, no, but it was, but it was just a little from anybody else. But I always thought she had, you know, even as a, a young man, um, it says your internet connection is unstable. I don't know why. Um, I, uh, yeah, she had uh, sex appeal as a, as a, a young woman. And, and, uh, and uh, here's a, a quick story. I went to, uh, I was at a, a local restaurant and I hadn't seen the girls for a, a while. And, but Chris, uh, Chris Sacone is Madonna's brother. And he's also a bass player. And I ran into him in the restaurant. And I said, so what are the girls doing? You know, meaning Paula and Madonna. And he said, oh, Paula's, uh, you know, she's going to fashion school, school for design or something like that. And, and Madonna's in New York, uh, working with the producer, making demos. And he pulls out lyrics to a song and he's reading me, you could be my lucky star, blah, 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 blah. And oh. I thought to myself, who the hell does she think she is? I'm the rock star of this time. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, you know, my band, we moved from Michigan to New York, lived in New York for uh, a year and a half or so. And then uh, we were on the road and got signed in Los Angeles. So I'm in Los Angeles in my apartment watching MTV because you go from new ad on MTV to light rotation to medium rotation. And I'm watching, I keep seeing Madonna, like a virgin, like a virgin, like a virgin. And then it was, and I hadn't been back home to Michigan in, you know, a year or two. And then it dawned on me like, Oh my God, that's Madonna Saccone. You know? Oh, wow. Um, what a so yeah, it was kind of, and then when I came back to, uh, to Michigan on holiday or something, everybody's going, Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. I go like, well, I got a record out too. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's quite shocking. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, you never know. I mean, you know, you grow up with people, and uh, sometimes the the nerdiest ones or the weirdest ones end up being very successful. You know, you don't really know. Well, there's a lot of rockers from Detroit or music people like uh, Eminem, isn't he from Detroit? Also? Yeah, okay, yeah. So. Kid, Kid Rock, Eminem, Ted Nugent. I mean, uh, all the all the Motown artists. Uh, sure. Yeah. God, you know, Sponge, uh, a friend of mine's band seducers. If you, if there's hundreds, I'm literally, you can make a list of hundreds of musicians or or groups. The MC5, um, oh God, there's yeah. something about the about the Midwest. <laughs> it's, there's hundreds, yeah, hundreds of musicians from yeah. from Michigan. Right, uh, it's, it's incredible. 
uh, Pop Evil, another uh, another fantastic group, uh, a newer band. But yeah, it's I don't know if it's in the water, if it's it's in the rust. I don't know what it is. <laughs> the air, the atmosphere, the creative energy. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. Um, I have um, another one I wanted to bring up because I when in doing the research about you and your band, uh -huh. um, Sebastian Bach was in your band at one point. He was yes, he was. And uh, yeah, how was that? Uh, you... For those that don't know, Sebastian uh, is, was the singer of Skid Row. Um, and he, uh, well, in, in the, uh, in the 80s, um, we were with Jet Records and Jet was, had tro problems of which no, people really don't know, but um, Don Arden had uh, problems. He chased his accountant back to Britain and beat his accountant up because his, his accountant was embezzling from him. And the accountant in retaliation for this, he ratted, uh, he filed attempted murder charges on Don Arden, um, of which Don was acquitted on. Um, and, you know, Don told us the, the story, you know, it's, oh my God, I can still picture him in his British accent. So, you know, and I put the, you know, the coat over his head and I grabbed a uh, <laughs> crystal, you know, uh, ashtray and I beat him in the head and, they, you know, and they lift the coat up to see if I was still there and I hit him again, you know. Um, but anyhow, so Don got some of his money back. But uh, in retaliation, uh, Botch, uh, the, the, the accountant ratted Don out to the IRS for tax evasion and so forth. So the Jet Records went from being open one week to the next week. Don's not taking our phone calls. And the next week, there's trucks there. And they shut the, um, you know, I remember the vice president of, of Jet saying, Don's in a meeting. You can't talk to me. He's with the DA, and I didn't know what the DA was, but apparently it's a district attorney. So they <laughs> um, they closed the office down, and the, Madame X was left without a label, and not only a, without a label, but Don was also our manager. So, and we were a baby band, you know. Uh, Black Sabbath, they just moved on, and Air Supply, they just moved on, um, because they were their name was so established that anybody would be happy to represent them, or you know. Um, but not us. We weren't so lucky. Um, and Vixen was pursuing Roxy, drummer at the time, you know, and um, and it was a perfect opportunity for her to jump because Vixen had, a, you know, a new deal or was being pursued by, you know, Love Bank management with an EMI interest and so forth. And Brett left and went to New York with his um, with his brother to to play in their old, the band that he had before he joined Madam X. And so Maxine and I are going like, well, we need a singer and we need a drummer. So we hired a guy named Mark McConnell, fantastic drummer from Florida. And, um, and this promoter said, we have, we understand you have, um, you know, you, you're auditioning singers here. You, you made a switch. So he said, I want to offer Sebastian Bach, this kid from, from Toronto. And we played, we did, Madame X did a tour of uh, Canada and Sebastian was at several of the shows. So, he sends us, you know, the old school envelope, the eight by 10 and a cassette, you know, and a bio and so forth. And I pull out the, the eight by 10. I go like, dude, kids that look like this, they can't, can't sing, you know, I mean, it was a beautiful boy. And so I popped the, the cassette in, uh, in the, in the player. And it was like, Oh my God, he sings like a bird. So we flew him out audition, you know, audition him. And, um, and then uh, we decided we're going to, he's going to hire, we're going to hire him. So, we went to pick him up at the train station in, in Windsor, which is across the Detroit River from Detroit to Windsor, Ontario, and then Toronto. So he took a train from Toronto to Windsor, and we're going to sneak him across the border, you know, to come live with, with me in my house and be the singer of Madame X. So Sebastian comes bouncing off the train, six foot four, his hair up to like, you know, full makeup on, full rock, you know, a, 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 car you know, a small bag in his hand. <laughs> I'm here, I'm going to be the, you know, I, knew, yeah, I thought to myself, holy shit, we're never going to, this isn't going to work. We're never going to get across the border. And sure enough, they stopped us at Windsor and said, where are you going? Sebastian goes, I'm moving to, you know, Michigan, I'm going to be a rock, rock star, you know. He's like, you have ID? No. Do you have any money? No. Do you have a passport? No. Ah, send him back. To so we, we drove him back to Toronto to get um, what we could get together for him so um, he could – come back to Michigan. So we stuck, stuck him across through a different border, through the Sarnia border. And then we can't, you know, the, he is my cousin, he's Canadian, he's gonna come stay for a week, we're gonna go to some amusement parks and blah, blah, blah. And that's how we got him across. And I don't know if he's ever been back to Canada. 
<laughs> but um, we, um, that's yeah, a funny story. Yeah, um, so um, we had him for 18 months or so, and he was young, and uh, we, I, you know, I, we'd grill him, you know, and, you know, my, my, my uh, publicist at the time was Michael Levine from Michael Levine Agency, and Michael Levine, if you don't know who he did, he did Michael Jackson and Madonna and Prince and U2 and the biggest of the biggest, and he also did Madame X. And what Michael did teach us is if you have nothing to say, they've got nothing to print. So if you don't have something to say, make something up, you know? So we would grill Sebastian because he was so, he was young, you know? We take these long, long walks and, you know, we just taught him. We, I gave him all the knowledge I could, but um, he was young and not, and not so focused. And there came a part, a, a parting time where it's like, you know, partying. And I, I just wanted to carry on with my career before too much time passed. And we gave him all the information we could. So we took him to a party. Uh, and we had already were already parting ways at the time, and the party was it was Mark Weiss's um, wedding. And Mark Weiss has a book out right now called "Decade of the Decade the Decade That Rocked," and it's Mark Weiss is a rock photographer. He did Guns N' Roses, Black Sabbath, Ozzy, Madame Max, every Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi, Simply One White album cover, Cinderella album covers. Everybody that was big in the '80s, Mark photographed them. So Mark. Um, there's a, in his new book, there's a, a big section on Madame X and also a big section on Madame X with Sebastian. So we, we brought Sebastian to this, to the wedding and, uh, and along with our drummer. And I call, I called Mark, Sebastian wasn't on the invitation, but the, the guitar player Maxine and I were. And so I, I said to Mark, I said, you know, can we bring Sebastian and Mark to the wedding? I'll pay for their, 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 their places at the table, you know, and we gave him the boost, you know, for the wedding. His the weddings aren't cheap. If, if, if you had two or three, you know that. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, and we did, we, we brought him to, to, um, to the wedding because uh, Sebastian was heartbroken. It's like he wasn't, he wasn't gonna go unless, you know, we, unless we brought him. So we brought him there. And then who was there was John Bon Jovi's parents, uh, David, who was the liaison for John, uh, Zach Wilde, Kevin Dubrow, little Steven from uh, East Street Band, the Cinderella guys, um, uh, the uh, Skid Row clan, you know, it was like a rock star wedding, you know? And so we sat in with, with, with the wedding band. I remember I was playing bass, but the, the bass, the cable that I had to go from my bass to the amp was like, literally, it was like a tuner cable. It was about three feet long. If I just, if I moved the wrong way, it unplugged from the amp. <laughs> so that was, I had to stand there like a mannequin trying to play these songs, which isn't my style. Um, you know, but in Zach Wilde was playing guitar, you know, doing the oh, Zeppelin gosh. cover and, and Sebastian singing. And then Dave, bon jo John's, uh, Bon Jovi's uh, liaison guy said, I want to introduce Sebastian to Mr. and Mrs. Bon Jovi, you know? And uh, he says, he says, your guy is perfect for this project that we're putting together called Skid Row. And I said, great, because he's no longer a singer, you know? And they exchanged numbers and a short while later, Sebastian's the singer of Skid Row. Um, yeah. And, and God bless him. And he's great, you know, and I did, we did all we could for him. It was just, yeah. we, he grew and, uh, and John took him over and, and sent him to the, you know. So you're kind of responsible for him, his whole career, bringing him here and then introducing him to Skid Row and. Wow. Sebastian would have been a star, whether I did anything or not. It might not have come so quickly, but that was, that's his destiny. He's that, that's, that's a good point. That was written, yeah. It was written, written for him way before, you know, I got, I was introduced to him. That's just, that's just what he was destined to do. Um, so I take no credit in that regard. Oh, well, I give you credit. Um, <laughs> Kudos. But I, I get what you're saying. Some people Reparations. are. Reparations. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your cut? Where's your cut? Um, all of, all of, in all in all, we need a lot of reparations for all the stuff we're doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, for those of you that don't know, uh, Spotify will cut you a check for your streams. I'd much rather sell a million records than have a million streams. Uh, uh, you, uh, a Spotify stream, they pay you 0 0.007 cents per stream, which is seven one hundredths of a penny. Yeah. Wow. So if I think it's like if you have a million streams, you make seven hundred dollars. I mean, it really, it, it's like dinner Lord. out. Yeah. Yes, a night on the town. What are you gonna yeah. do with that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice dinner for four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it does. But 
but they crush you by why should somebody buy a record because they, you can get it for free. I don't need to buy it. I'll just go on YouTube and, and stream it, you know? So it's really crushing as far as being a creative person. I'm not just talking about music, but I'm talking about the arts in general. Uh, sure. People that dedicate and devote their life to being creative and, uh, and, uh, and entertaining others. And then to, to have to face the music of you're doing it for free. I just don't feel that's, that's fair. It's you know wrong. what I'd like is a musician card that says, hi, I'm a musician. Here's my card. Here's my number. And when I go to get my brakes done or my house painted or tip the waitress at a restaurant or whatever, it's like, okay, so I'm going to pay you 0 0.007 cents on the dollar. Waitress, I know you always oh, a service great. Oh, it's fantastic. But here's 0 0.007 cents. <laughs> yeah. Tip you know, on the dollars. So really, I'm going to pay you um, point, you know, I'm going to... Ten, you, your tip is 10 cents. <laughs> There's a old you story. Know, or, or your break job is, is a, it's a dollar 34. <laughs> There's a story I heard about Frank Sinatra where he was at, you know, somewhere in Vegas and some guy came up to him at the bar and he goes, Hey Frank, sing me a song, you know? And, and Frank Sinatra turned to the guy and he said, what do you do? And he goes, uh, I'm, I'm a plumber. You know, he's like, okay, I want you to come over to my house and do some plumbing for me. You know, he yeah. was like, you know, yeah. the Bingo. point is, <laughs> Bingo. That's, I mean, that's fair. Right? right. Okay. So we're sitting here and I have an idea for you, Chris, take it or leave it. So I'm a big fan of Daryl Hall's. Do mm -hmm. you know, you know, Hall and Oates. Yeah. Daryl Hall, John Oates, uh, Daryl's yeah. house. Yes. Why, why don't you do something like Daryl's house? Um, um, you're in, you're out in the beautiful wild of Michigan. And you got a big house. Car, do a little jam. So anyway, that's just my idea. That's not a I, that's I not a bad idea. I mean that that would be a lot of fun. Um, and that could be your your YouTube on your YouTube channel, jamming with your old friends. I'd watch it. I think it would be fun. Yeah, Kelly and I might come out, and I can I can sing and play for you. <laughs> right, yeah, I can't work. <laughs> and I'll be the fan. I'll be the fan cheering everyone on. <laughs> you can tune the guitar. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I yeah. like I like the idea. I, I anyway, yeah, just it's a good thought. idea, Kelly. You won't make yeah. any money in the beginning. Or maybe never, but <laughs> you know. But at least it gives you some exposure. Well, yeah. there's so many fans from that era. There's so many people that are still interested in all of you guys that you know had your careers in the '80s and and still traveling and touring and to be um, to be able to see some behind the scenes stuff and everything. I don't know. Just a thought. That's a good uh, point. I, I I agree, and I think um, um, I, I love the idea. And I'd like to use this opportunity to say, if you like what you're seeing here, like, share, and subscribe, <laughs> because we're going to build this channel, and you don't I like you that. don't become monetized until you have X amount of hours of viewing and cool. or 1,000 subscribers. So we're going to get to 1,000 yeah, subscribers. Yeah. Wait, everyone, yeah. all Madam X fans, when I post this, you're going to go to this channel, please, and Aww. subscribe. Aww, it costs sweet. absolutely nothing to do so. And what I'm offering is an idea for you, Kelly. Okay in Canberra is um, you're going to have uh, a, a separate once a month um, and it's called uh, Sunset Till Dawn uh, where it's talk where you're interviewing and, and chatting with uh, rockers from you know the, the 80s That's to current right. um, and what you experienced on Sunset and how was Hollywood back in the day because oh I like that you know, it's, it's yeah. notorious and it's but there's not a lot of, of I mean, uh, people out ask me all the time. So what was Sunset like? What was what was Rainbow yeah, like? What was yeah. you know? Um, and it was oh my god! In front of uh, oh, from from the whiskey, yeah. From well, the whiskey you know, yeah. to Gazaris, there was probably two thousand musicians and fans lined up on the sidewalk. Musicians, I mean, Poison passing out flyers. Come and see us at the Troubadour. You know, yeah. more. Everybody and you know and Kelly and you could you could do your uh, uh, write a book uh, you know serve you know bartender you you were a bartender right I think yeah. I remember yeah. you as a door girl or no, I was the bartender I made your okay. drinks <laughs> okay fantastic Show well, some respect I know there's a reason why I like you um, <laughs> but you know serving uh you know uh, yeah. slash or or yeah. or 
Well, hanging out with them too, because when you're in that scene, you know, you're just hanging out with them afterwards, after parties, after the bar closes and they hang out and um, yeah, back in the rate at the rainbow, back in the kitchen and correct. Going up Mario, and yeah. 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 The sacred table there right by yeah. the cook, you know, yeah. uh, yep. and the soup, That's the so rainbows, funny. the chicken soup was second to none. But one night after, I think I left maybe FM station. Um, I had this, I was with my drummer and I had this wild idea that it would be so cool to, to walk to a Hollywood sign. Right. So we make our way up. I don't know, Laurel Canyon or something. And then maybe there's like Lake Hollywood or something. Uh, there's a lake up there on the side of the mountain. Yeah, Lake Hollywood. Um, yeah, so, and I'm winding, uh, and I come to the end of this cul-de-sac where I can see the sign on the mountain, but the road ends. So there's like, you know, a couple of houses and then there's this guardrail and look like a footpath. So it's dark, I don't have a flashlight, I'm with Mike and we're walking through this bramble and stumbling and falling down, you know, when we're half drunk and it's 3 a.m., trying to make our way to the Hollywood sign. And we didn't get to the Hollywood sign, but we got, it was, it was quite a trek. So and maybe an hour or so later, we make it back to the car. And I don't know how we made it back to the car. That's the second miracle. And then I told my friend this story, who's a local there, and he goes, are you stupid? I said, well, no, we wanted to see it. He goes, there's coyotes and there's mountain lions and there's scorpions and there's, you know, rattlesnakes and, you know, we oh didn't get God. stung. We didn't get bit. <laughs> we didn't even, we didn't even see the sign, but, um, wow. Yeah. That's Welcome so to funny. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. That was, that was, those were just fun days. I mean, I, I, I love to reminisce and talk about them with my old friends that I hung out back then. Um, but yeah, just people couldn't even imagine how much fun it was. And the, oh, and that's, the why the, that's why Go the ahead. book needs to be written. Yeah. And the rainbow alone has a really interesting history. Oh, history. Before it was the rainbow, it was like owned yeah. by Judy Garland's husband, Vincent Manilli, who was uh -huh. a film director of the oh, 40s. Yep. Yeah. And so I wanted, I always wanted to do a little thing about the rainbow because it's got so much history, you know? Yeah. yeah you never know who you're going to run. You're never going to run who you're going to run into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it was no. an intimate little place. I mean, it was so small. Um, you know, the main room. And then there was the upstairs. Uh -huh. um, yeah, just so many good memories of going there and <laughs> everybody eating, Every drinking the pizza, the best pizza ever, the chicken soup. Oh, yum. Cinnamon, yeah. cinnamon loaf bread or something. Yeah. Was, they, oh, yes. They had that cinnamon bread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so sh you shout out to the rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And at any given time, you could go, I mean, fans from all over the world would go there, but you'd walk in there. I, one night we, we walked in after doing something, I don't know, but you know, I'm filing to our booth and who's, you know, on the left of me is uh, uh, Brian May of, of Queen. And I said, oh, Brian, and, and he pops his head up and it's like he burned his mouth on his, oh. <laughs> so, whatever he was eating. But you know, you know, Lemmy would be there with, you know, everybody. Yeah, always there, yeah, yeah. Just, it was just a great room. Yeah, and then, you know, you just go up and down the strip all, all night. You're going to the Roxy and the Whiskey and the Rainbow. Right, What's right, that right. one place by the Rainbow and upstairs? What was that On place? the Rocks? On the Rocks? Yes, no. on the Rocks. On the Rocks, yeah. Um, and then later they had the... Uh, oh, on the Rocks. It used to be Gazari's location. Oh, okay. oh, it did? Oh, okay. I, I think so. I didn't know. As that. you're heading towards Go Haney? the Rainbow and upstairs. You had to go up the stairs. Yeah, I never went to Gazari's, but you're, is it still there on Sunset? Uh, no, it got... Closed, no, right? they tore it because I was down and built a bigger live venue there. And I oh. don't, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't even know what it's called. Oh, maybe it's Billboard Live. Is it Billboard yeah. Live? Oh, I was going to Billboard too. Yeah. Perhaps. And that was later. The rocks, I, don't re I don't recall that room. In the Viper Room right across. Viper, mm -hmm. correct. Over there. Um, oh, such fun times. Fun For time. those of you who like to rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah check, check out the new channel where they're going to interview uh, 80s. Uh, coming up, Mark Slaughter. What? <laughs> 80s rocker are you going to arrange all this <laughs> yes and I know uh, all these people <laughs> the, the, te the guys from tesla and mr big and, uh, and if you love the 80s uh come to the, this channel subscribe and get notified that you that uh, chris just turned our channel into the 80s channel <laughs> it's gonna come no wow. not only eight but that that's that's just the once a month uh yeah. Right. Okay. One month it'll be eighties. Yeah. Then it'll be nineties. Yeah. Then it'll be two thousand. Yeah. And then we start yeah. over again. We have our list. We have a some some on our list that we're planning on roping into coming. And uh, we have uh, uh, yeah. Would, uh, 
join us, Chris, too. I was excited to. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, Kelly told me all about you and uh, your little, you know, fun times. You guys have known each other through the years. So she was excited to see you. Yeah, yeah. She looks exactly as I remember her. Oh, Doesn't no. she? <laughs> exactly. No. She hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> Hey, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. So I just trying to age gracefully. Is that what they say? You age. Gracefully? You tried to, you're trying to young gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, this was fun. This has been fun. So I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll be messaging you and I'll let you know when the video's done and we'll, uh, get you some videos of Kimbra so you can see her singing. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah. Singer yeah. too. So, um, so do you, uh, do you, Kimber, do you write and record? Yes. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. We're uh, writing. Uh, we finished just one new song. We've got one that we're doing tomorrow, actually. So I have a songwriting partner. Um, it's a long story. I won't go into it right now. But yes, I do write and record. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Here. What kind of music is it? It's kind of what we're doing right now is sort of uh, up-tempo blues, but it's also... Uh, pop and rock kind of mixed into it so i got i i have eclectic style <laughs> so hopefully other people will like it <laughs> yeah and a beautiful voice beautiful voice so mm -hmm. anywho well chris we're gonna let you get back to what you're doing and um i hope you'll consider maybe doing chris's house because i would yeah be that. that would be awesome yeah yeah so we'll yeah see. well um i i love the idea yeah. Is there anything else you want to share with people? Um, watch for my YouTube channel and it, it's going okay. to be um, Let us my know. house renovations, building the house, um, okay. different aspects of it and uh, watch the process happen. And yeah. then, uh, the performance, you know, it's, I'm always chasing my dream. And what do I want to do when I grow up? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, that's how you have a more full life. Yeah, yeah. We're always in process. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you have a full life, you know, you get to uh, you uh, chase your passions in addition to, you know, the, the mundane things that we have to do. So, yay. Well, it's really good to see you. And My you look pleasure. great, too. And uh, your video, we'll put links down below our video to anything you want us to, you know, link to. So, let, and let me know, keep me, keep in touch about your YouTube channel and we'll help promote that, too. So, anyway, you have a good rest of the day and it's really great to see you, Chris. My pleasure. Okay, we'll take Thank care. you, ladies. Have fun with your like, son. Share and subscribe. Yeah. Like, share, Thank subscribe. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.